Hello and welcome everyone. Today we are going to discuss queues in data structures. But before we begin, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update from Simply Learn. Primarily, let's have a look at our plan for this session today. We will start this session with an introduction to the queue. Later, we will discuss the structure of the queue in detail. After that, we will deal with different operations that can be performed on queues. Advancing further, we will understand various types of queues and their structures. And finally, we will discuss different applications of queues to understand how queues are used to manipulate data. On that note, without further delay, let's get started with Introduction to Queue. You know that all of us depend on messaging applications like WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, Instagram chats to communicate with our friends and family members. And while using them, you must have observed that the person you are trying to communicate with receives messages in the same order as you have sent them. Now the question that arises here is, how is this happening? How are these applications maintaining the order of these text messages? And the solution to these questions bring us to Q. Basically, in these applications, a queue is maintained for each user, containing the messages to be delivered to the user. When the user connects to the network, all the text messages in the queue gets delivered, and once the messages are delivered, empty queues get deleted. This example clearly illustrates the importance of data structures. So let's dive further and understand the structure of the queue in depth. But before doing that, let's look at a real-life example of queues to understand it more clearly. The most common and relevant example of a queue is a movie ticket counter. In the movie ticket counter, you must have observed that both of its ends remain open. Also, these ends are fixed with the help of barricades. And that is why no one can enter in between these ticket lines. Additionally, the person who enters first receives a ticket first and the person who enters last will obviously get served at last. Queues in data structure resembles all these properties of a movie ticket counter which makes them better at creating virtual first-come, first-serve systems. Basically, they are defined as a linear collection of different data types that allow insertion at one end and deletion at another. Unlike any other data structure, the queue ends remain open, allowing it to have different functionalities at both ends. The end at which insertion takes place is called rear, and the end at which deletion takes place is known as front. Furthermore, there are two approaches to consider the structure of the queue, and both of them depend on the approach of the programmer. That means being a programmer, if you consider the left end as front, then your rare node will be at right end. Otherwise, if you consider the left end as rare, then the right end will be your queue's front node. Unlike arrays and linked lists, elements in the queue cannot be operated from their respective locations. Here, they can only be operated from the front or rare position. Moving on, let's discuss the operations in queue data structures one by one. The first operation is NQ. It is used to store the elements in the queue. Next up is DQ. This operation is used for removing them. Further, we have isFull and isNull operations. isFull function scrutinizes if the queue is full or not, and the isNull operation evaluates if the queue is empty. We also have a peak operation that helps you get the element from the front of the queue without removing it. Let's now understand how these operations work with the help of the following examples. Here we will look at NQ5, NQ1, NQ-2, then isFull, then DQ, peak, and isNull. But before explaining these operations, it's essential that we initialize the queue data structure by assigning some random size to it. For example, int q of 3. By this declaration, we are assigning only 3 spaces for insertion in q. Also at this phase, there is no element in the q as it's empty. So both the front node and rear node will point to the same location with null memory space in the storage system. Let's consider that null index to be minus 1 for ease of our convention. Now the first operation on our list is nq of 5. As we discussed previously, NQ operation is nothing but the insertion of data into a queue data structure. It begins with checking if the queue is full or not. If the queue is full, then the previously assigned memory is completely filled with data elements. So insertion would not be possible. This is also known as overflow error in terms of programming. But as a queue is empty, so the insertion can be performed here. 
For that, we have to increment the rare pointer to index 0 from index minus 1. And once we do that, the data element 5 will be added to the queue. Also for front insertion, both front and rare will point to the same location as there is only one element present in this queue. Let's insert two more elements into this queue with the operations NQ1 and NQ-2. For that, we have to increment the rare pointer to the next index, which will be 1. Now, as the point is incremented, so the data will be entered into this position. Next up is NQ-2. Again, we have to follow the same process of incrementing the rare pointer. We will increment the rare pointer to point towards the next index, that is index 2, and hence the data element with value minus 2 will be entered here. The next operation on our list is is full. In this operation, if the rare pointer points to the max size, then the queue is considered to be full as there is no space left for insertion. In our case, the max size of our queue is 12 bytes. Additionally, we are considering to enter only three integer elements. And one integer data element takes four bytes of the memory space. That means three integer elements will take 12 bytes. Hence, this function will prompt Q is full on the screen. Now we will discuss the DQ operation. If we want to access data from a queue, we have to perform two subtasks. The first one is access the data where the front is pointing and another is to remove the data after access. And this complete process is called as DQ operation. The first step of this operation is to check if the queue is empty. If the queue is empty, then there is no element available for deletion. This is a case of underflow error. But as our queue is not empty, we can proceed with the next steps. We will be accessing data from the front node and later we will be incrementing the front pointer in order to remove the link to the previous node so that the data gets removed. Now, front will point to the index 1. Thus, the data value 5 will be removed from the queue and will also be prompted on the screen. Therefore, this function comes with an integer return type. Next up is peak operation. In this operation, element at the front node will be accessed without deleting it. The algorithm for this operation begins with checking if the queue is empty or not. If the queue is not empty, then data at the front node will be accessed with temporary variable and printed on the screen. Advancing further, let's perform two more DQ operations here. First is DQ of 1 and another one is DQ of minus 2. The data at a front node will be accessed primarily and the front pointer will be incremented to point to the next data element. When we do the pointer incrementation, the link to the previous node gets removed, which results in data deletion. Similarly, we will perform a DQ of minus 2 operation here. Now, the front will be pointed to null memory space as there is no element left in RQ and the data minus 2 will be removed. The last operation on our list is is empty. This function checks if the queue is empty or not. In the previous procedure, we mentioned that if the front points to the null memory space, then the queue is empty. And in our case, the front is already pointing to minus 1. So the output of this function will be queue is empty. This is all about operations in the queue. I hope that you all are clear with these operations. Next, we will discuss different types of queues and their structures at a glance. Basically, there are four types of queues, linear queue, circular queue, priority queue, and double-ended queue. The structure which we have discussed till this time is that of a linear queue, so now we will move on to circular queue. The circular queue is almost similar to the linear queue, except that the last node of this queue is connected to the first. It is also known as ring buffer as all the ends are connected to another end. Additionally, this circular queue is a better version of the linear queue as it removes the drawback of insertion in the linear queue. The empty space available in a circular queue can be filled with the new element by simply incrementing the value of the rare position. We will learn about this in detail in our further sessions. A priority queue is another special type of queue data structure in which each element has some priority assigned with it. Based on the priority of each element, the elements are arranged in a priority queue. If the elements occur with the same priority, then they are served according to the first-in-first-out principle. 
In the priority queue, the insertion occurs based on the arrival, while the deletion occurs based on the priority. The above figure shows that the highest priority element comes first and the elements of the same priority are arranged based on the first-in, first-out structure. The last type of queue is DQ. DQ is a linear data structure in which the insertion and deletion operations are performed from both the ends. We can say that DQ is a generalized version of the queue. DQ can be used as stack as well as queue as it allows the insertion and deletion operations on both the ends. If the insertion takes place at one end and deletion at another, then that DQ is known as a linear queue. And if both addition and deletion are performed at a single end, then that DQ is called stack. Advancing further, let's discuss some applications of queues to gauge an insight into the importance of queues. The queue data structure is used in computers, printers and applications to utilize the benefits of the first come first serve technique. In computers, whenever you work on documents or PPTs, you must have observed that whichever key you press on the keyboard appears in the exact same order on the screen. But when your processor is too busy with other tasks, you might notice that the keys you press appear on the screen with some delay after you press them. Basically, those keys are stored in queue, and when the processor becomes free, it processes in the order the keys are pressed. That means the key pressed first will be written in a Word document first. So this is how computers use a queue to eliminate deadlocks when multiple processes are in a ready state. Next up is printers. A queue data structure is used in printers to maintain the order of pages while printing. That means the pages are stored in a queue in the order that you want to print them. And once the page is removed from an ordered queue, it gets printed. Another most common application of queue data structure is their usage in web or mobile apps. Applications like Domino, Swiggy uses a queue for maintaining food order status. If you place an order from an online portal, your order ID enters the queue. And once the previous orders before your order ID gets catered, then your order will be catered as well. From these examples, we can clearly say that queues are used whenever there is a need for an FCFS strategy in software development. So whenever you work on projects that need a first come first serve approach, then remember that you have to implement a queue data structure to complete it successfully. Finally, let's have a look at some key takeaways that we discussed in this session. We started this session by examining the structure of the queue. We learned that the queue is a linear data structure. After that, we talked about different operations of queues in which we learned NQ and DQ are responsible for data manipulation in a queue. Later, we discussed different types of queues as well. Finally, we discovered some applications of queues and how they fulfill the need of FCFS systems. We have also made it clear that queues can handle multiple data types as well. So with this, we come to the end of this video. I hope this video was informative and exciting. If you have any queries regarding the topics covered in this video, let us know in the comment section below. Our team of experts will be happy to resolve your queries. Thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned to simply learn for more such interesting videos. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.